and welcome to our in-depth daily space weather video. I be your host, Dan, aka smash mash And the first thing we're going to look at is magnetohydrodynamic pressure. Earth's magnetic moment from space. We can expect to see this light up early in the day tomorrow as we're expecting a coronal mass ejection strike capable of producing a KP6 geomagnetic storm condition. Let's let this play through to show the last four hours of, again, magnetohydrodynamic pressure modeled in nanopascal by the Space Weather Modeling Framework. If you want to read about what that is, just click on the Details tab here. You'll get a link to the Space Weather Modeling Framework. You can read all about it. And it's refreshed one more time. Let's let it play. By the way, this is going to be lighting up probably during tomorrow's Space Weather video as a coronal mass ejection strikes. We covered it pretty quickly as we typically do on the channel. We'll also show Earth magnetic moment from the ground, since we've shown it from space to about 12 Earth diameters. Here it is from the ground. This one's modeled in nano Tesla geospace delta B. When you see delta in science, folks, that means change in. So we're looking at changes in Earth's B field, essentially, here. And this will show you the most likely places for power grid induction, pipeline and railroad track induction, the aurora, and other features of a space weather storm. KP index currently at four, as it's a condition of geomagnetic unrest. For your new viewers, the KP index is a measurement of global geomagnetism. What's causing it? Well, what's causing it is a prolonged strong field with a negative BZ component, a, a highly southward orientation of the magnetic field. As you can see here, this lengthy signal and this ramp up here in the total field was accompanied by a convergence on the zero line. So we're going to see this KP4 come back down to a KP probably two, but certainly a KP3 will be the next bar most likely, as we're seeing the subsiding of this strong southward BZ component. It's this red line up here up top. That red line is the vertical orientation of the magnetic field. So the white line is the total field strength in nanotesla and the BZ is the extent to which that is vertically toward one pole or the other, essentially. We're also seeing a mild uptick here in the solar wind density, currently at about six and a half protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed still still elevated from a high speed coronal hole wind stream there, 484 kilometers per second. And we are expecting the geomagnetic storm conditions to happen tomorrow, April 14th, between 6 and 12 universal time. Also additional geomagnetic storm forecasted there for the 15th. I think that is from additional high-speed coronal hole wind stream components. And let's blast through a bunch more data. We've got to look at sunspots and coronal holes and more. The proton flux remains flatlined here. No relativistic particles showing up at planet Earth. There are your Gauss magnetometer readings and these spiky readings. Those are one of the many signatures of coro coronal hole high speed stream as a bunch of high speed plasma shows up at Earth's magnetic moment and must make some rather rapid decisions since they're traveling over 480 kilometers per second. Next, the heliospheric current sheet. And yesterday we were looking at <clears throat> the possibility of the return of a South Pole current sheet. Now I would say not, because we've got a new sunspot. It'll be sunspot 2990. We'll get to it. First, the line of sight ecliptic plane field plot. Earth remains in a North Pole current sheet, and I would expect Earth to remain in a North Pole current sheet, despite three sunspot groups in the Northern Hemisphere. So here's your coronal hole line of sight plot. You can see some North Pole-oriented coronal holes here rotating in. Remember, folks, if, you, if you're not aware of this, Solar polar field reversal cycles are an aspect of a solar cycle. So it's not just sunspots, it's also the reversal of the solar polar fields. And actually, we're seeing a little bit of a delay in this. Shout out to Scott McIntosh, who sort of called the Terminator event. It looks legit. And we can expect to see 
a ramp up in solar activity. There are those North Pole coronal holes there and 193 angstroms. This is sunspot 2988. This is sunspot 2989. And this will be sunspot 2990 down here. It'll get a name today because it's quite large. And it may be beta class, but it's a little too early to tell. So here is our sunspot analysis. And the likelihood of flares goes up a little bit as we've got at least two beta class sunspot groups. These are both beta class at this point. Uh, sunspot 2990, only alpha class at the moment. What do you think? Will it be a beta class sunspot when it fully rises? We've got no indication that there are any trailing umbrae yet of opposite polarity. We'll have to keep an eye on that. So here is 1700 angstroms. And these sunspots are all quite modest in size. We're going to show you some close-ups. But first, let's pause for station identification. Did you know that we're also on BitChute? BitChute.com slash smash a mash. And uh, our view count has mysteriously dropped in the past few days. It was up to over 2,000 views a day. Now it's down to like 300. Very strange. We're also on Twitter. We're about to reach the 250 followers mark on Twitter. Oh my god. So many facts. I'm surprised anybody will tune in because facts are very scary. Speaking of very scary, the active shooter situation in Brooklyn was totally not terrorism, according to the NYPD. This is a person of interest. In other words, there are some people think that think that that's the guy that did it. It's the alleged mass shooter. Next, a reminder that we regularly stream our videos live to Twitch. In fact, we already did it today. So don't be so spaced out and not realize that we're, yeah, putting content up out the you-know-what. Twitch.tv slash smash -a is our most likely spot to be streaming live, although we do stream live to YouTube as well. The best place to find all of our content is at smashamash.com slash smash team. Just click on the posts link. Shout out to our new gold annual paid up subscriber. That's the best value, by the way, for a gold membership you get a complimentary email address if you want one you get access to additional content and with a gold annual paid up subscription you get complimentary merch so it's by far the best value it's equivalent to getting four months of gold membership for free at smashamash.com slash smash team so again watch out for facts make sure you don't visit our websites don't pick up any merch it's very dangerous because it contains facts welcome to the near renaissance this message brought to you at massive personal risk and expense at smashomash.com. Shout out to Smash Staff. So here's uh, some close-up imagery of our new sunspot group, sunspot 2988, sunspot 2989. And sunspot 2989 looks like it's sputtering a little bit here. But they're both beta class sunspot groups as they've got opposite polarity umbrae. At least through part of that transit. And here's the new rising group here. Sunspot 2990. This will likely be named. And it's just going to show up at the very end there. It's a little bit hard to see. It's just risen in the past couple of hours. Wait for it. There you can kind of see it showing up. Let's talk about flares. Quite a few C-class flares here happened over the past 24. Did they produce additional coronal mass ejections? Well, we'll let you know in a moment. First, a star chart. And if you're up before dawn, you may see this planetary pileup that's been going on for months. Saturn, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter all rising ahead of the sun. It's quite a delight if you've got a clear horizon before dawn. Next, the solar system forecast. Here's where things are now. We'll show you the one-week forecast as we've got a gibbous waxing. Full moon coming. There's where things will be on 420. And we'll close out the space weather video with coronagraph imagery from the Stereo A and the Soho Lasco C3 to see if there are any additional CMEs. And the answer is no, there aren't. The likelihood that there will be more is very high. 
as we've got massive filaments. You can actually see them showing up here on the Stereo A coronagraph. And especially this one down here in the south will eject soon. So anyway, this is also Jupiter, by the way, if you're wondering what that is. That's Jupiter on the Stereo A imagery. That's about where we'll close up our in-depth daily space weather video. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. May that solar wind be at your back as I sign off from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news.